Good morning and welcome to Bethany's worship service. My name is Brenda Lewis and it is my joy to be with you on this Father's Day 2021. We at Bethany have been blessed throughout the month to lift up the men and the various areas in which they have shared their gifts and talents with others. So today, we will be lifting up the names of new dads and granddads who were blessed with the gift of new birth during the past 12 to 14 months. Also today, we will have a special Father's Day prayer by one of our young people. Also, we want to say thank you to you who continue to bless us with your financial support as well as your presence that we may further the mission and ministry of Bethany to the world. Also, I want to let you know that on Sunday, July 4th, we are looking tentatively to begin live streaming our in-person services. We're also looking tentatively to add a traditional worship service at 11 a.m. So I invite you to check out our Cyber Beacon, our website for additional information. And last but not least, thank you to our missions committee who continues to be a blessing to those in our community. And now, please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the many ways that you bless us as we gather from near and far. We ask, Lord, that you pour out your blessing upon fathers and father figures all over this world. And most of all, God, we thank you for Jesus and it is in his name we pray, amen and amen. Now, church, let's worship. Great 
Hey, good morning, friends. My name is Kathy Vidic, and I get to be the Kids and Family Ministry Pastor here at Bethany. And this morning, I'm so excited about three things. The first thing I'm excited about is that I get to see you here this morning. The second thing I'm excited about is wishing all of our dads and all of those who fill a special role in someone's life a very happy Father's Day. You guys rock. The third thing I'm so excited about today is being able to talk to you again about our Life App for this summer. Now, last week I said that our Life App for this summer is the most important Life App to know and to follow. Last week I said that if you could only know and follow one Life App, this would be the Life App to know and to follow. Do you remember what it is? That's right. Our life app for this summer is confidence. And we say that confidence is learning to see yourself the way that God sees you. Now, last week I said that when God sees you, God sees a person that God loves enough to send God's only son, Jesus, to die on a cross and then be raised from the dead so that you and I could be with God now and always, no matter what. You see, God doesn't want anything, anything, to separate us from God's love for, for us, not even our own behavior. Did you know that there is nothing that you and I could ever do that could make God stop loving us that much? Now, you may be asking, Pastor Kathy, what if I break one of God's rules about loving God or loving others or loving myself? And I will say, friends, here's the thing. We break God's rules about loving God loving others, and loving ourselves. And when we realize we do that, we don't feel very good in our hearts, do we? But here's the thing. God is waiting right there. God is waiting for us right at the place where we left off to go do the unloving thing. God is waiting for us to realize what we did and come to him and say, God, I am so sorry. I just did such an unloving thing. I know that you sent Jesus so that I can be forgiven and I can be with you even though I did that thing. So would you please forgive me in Jesus name? And you know what? God will forgive you every single time. That's how much God loves you. That's how God sees you. And when we learn to see ourselves the way that God sees us like that, then we have amazing confidence for life and it helps us to make good choices. Now you may be saying, Pastor Kathy, how does that work? And I will say, I think it works something like this. I think when we learn to see ourselves as God sees us, the more that we do that, then the more we begin to understand that we are very special to God and that God made us in a very special way with special gifts and talents and abilities. And when we begin to understand that, then we begin to think about the things that we love to do and the things that we're good at and the people around us and how they respond to us when we do those things. And when we begin to understand how much doing those things blesses all of the people around us, then it becomes more important for us to do those things and it becomes less important for us to do other things. What other things you might be asking? Well, some of those other things might be things that come up in our heads or we might get invited to do things that we're not entirely comfortable with that our parents definitely wouldn't like if we did, things that might make God sad if we did, those kinds of things become much less important to us. And that makes it much easier for us to say no thank you to them. I don't need to try that thing because I know how much God loves me. I know how God sees me. And God sees me as this special person that he created to do these amazing things. That is confidence at its best, my friends. Now, next week, I get to talk to you about confidence one more time, and I can't wait. But in the meantime, I hope you have a great week. I hope that you remember how much God loves you, and so do I. See you next time. Hi, 
I'm Pastor Brenda, and it's my joy to welcome you to this time in our service where we are celebrating the men of Bethany. This week, we are celebrating those individuals who were blessed with the gift of a new birth the way of a son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter during the past 12 to 14 months. It is always exciting to have new birth and additions to the family. And so we will be sharing those names with you momentarily, but I also would like to invite you to join our celebration on next Sunday as well, where we will be lifting up the names of men who have served in the areas of community, public service, or the military during either COVID in earlier days in their life's journey, or even now, we want to show our appreciation for them being a part of the family of Bethany and blessing others. So you can email me at brenda at bethanyum.org. Now, please join me as we lift up the names of our new dads and granddads. I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. God, you are so, so good, and we are so glad to celebrate, we celebrate that you are our Heavenly Father. We celebrate that you have given us fathers here on earth to love us and show us your way. Thank you for our dads and for all of those who love us like dads thank you for your love your creations and for this new day in jesus name we pray amen
checklist. I've got my historical information. I've got my caps and I've got you. Hey, maybe you can help me this morning, friends. I'm actually on a mission to be able to find a few good men. I have decided that just because the military has certain slogans that they use to recruit people during this time, I think that we could possibly use some of those same words that they used back in 1779 when they were trying to recruit people into the Marines. And some people like that slogan so much that they even made a movie in 1992 entitled, Looking for a Few Good Men. Well, today, we are going to be looking towards the Word of God under our sermon message title, Wanted a Few Good Men. Many of you know who have been in the military that there are certain requirements and checks that need to be fulfilled in order to meet the obligation and requirements to be a Marine. We know that there are aptitude tests that one needs to take. We know that there's also a test to test one's physical wellness and abilities. There's also a test to tag out where we are in our thinking, if you will, just to name a few of the initial requirements to even be considered. And then, of course, if you're part of the corporate world, as I have been, there are other things that they want to look at about us, whether or not we have a degree from a particular institution, or uh, whether we come from good stock, or whether we're married or single, or whether we live on uh, this side of the tracks or that side of the tracks. A whole lot of questions and requirements. And as I looked at the celebration that is before us today, that of Father's Day, I could not help but stop and think about what the scripture says to us in regards to what God is looking for when we're talking about a few good men. And so I went to the Old Testament, to the book of 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the first through the 12th verses. Hear these words. Now the Lord said to Samuel, you have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Take a heifer with you, the Lord said, and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came trembling to meet him. What's wrong, they asked. Do you come in peace? Yes, Samuel replied. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice too. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, 
for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse told his son, Abinadad, to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one that the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shemia. But Samuel said, neither is this the one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were brought to Samuel. But Samuel, excuse me, said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse said, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and the goats. Send for him at once, said Samuel. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one. Anoint him. So often, my friends, when we talk about looking for a few good individuals, more specifically, when we talk about looking for a few good men, sometimes we think that we can do it as the world would say, and all we need to do is just toss out a few little trinkets and things and see how grateful they are, how willing they are to stoop to our ways and to be one of the group. But that's not what God looks at. For it tells us in this Old Testament scripture that God does not look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. I would say the same is true when it came to when God had called others who were either in the same age group of David or maybe a little bit older, such as Jeremiah, who had to go in to tell Jerusalem that God was not happy with them, and yet God reassured him that he knows the plans that he had for this young man, plans for a future and a hope, plans that he would prosper. This is not the only time that God has spoken to men of various ages and have sent others to go and seek them out to be a part of his greater plan. For if we look in the chapter in the Gospel of Matthew, I'm sorry, if we look at the Gospel of Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 18th through the 22nd verses, we find Jesus beginning his ministry, and at the 18th verse it says, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called to them, two. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. When God is looking for a few good people, more specifically, a few good men, he is looking for those who are willing to trust him. Those who are willing to leave their past behind and to seek out what is before them, willing to press, if you will, to something far greater, willing to understand that God created us in his image and he said it was good. Men, regardless of whether or not you have 
all of the accolades that the world would look for, whether you went to this university or that college, whether you have a large bank account or no bank account at all, whether or not you live on this side of the tracks or that side of the track, God is looking at the heart. And as I looked at this and I examined it more, I thought about when we go to the doctors. Some of us go just to make sure that everything is still in a working order and you know the routine. He has the stethoscope or she has a stethoscope. She has the device that will check out our eardrums and they look in our nostrils. They also look down our throats and they also tap on our chest as well as our back and then they take out that little gizmo that'll make your knee jerk in funny ways to see if things are okay. But understand, a lot of this is what the physical eye can see. However, God doesn't go by what the physical eye sees, but what the spiritual eye is able to see. The same is true if we go to a doctor to say, I don't feel quite so well. And they send us for various tests. Some for x-rays and others for ultrasounds. And then there's the CAT scan. And oh yes, we can't forget that glorious machine called an MRI. Each of these are able to examine different parts of our body and also report the different things that they see. But it doesn't always tell everything depending on what test, what device that they use. The same is true, I would say, for the human eye. If we're going and we're looking for those good men to see whether or not they are able to be fathers to the fatherless and those who are willing to work alongside those who have hit a few bumps in the road or who are willing to come and teach a Sunday school class or come on a Sunday night and welcome in middle school and high school youth who may have come for the very first time. God's not looking at their outer appearance. God is looking in heart, those who know how important it is to be in someone else's life, to give them hope, to let them know that they're not walking in this world alone, that there is someone who does love them. There is someone who does care about them. There is someone who is willing to look beyond their faults and see their needs that they can continue on this journey called life, but not just life, but discipleship, not just life, but a life worth living for God. Friends, when we talk about looking for a few good men or we can always go to the word of God because when we understand that when God is present in our lives and we trust God to be there for us then we know as Paul told the people in Romans in chapter 8 28 that we know that for I'm sorry and we know for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, that all things will work together for good. We understand that Micah in the sixth chapter had the words, he has told you, oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly before our God. To understand that the God who created us is the same God who was calling us through his son Jesus Christ and now by way of the Holy Spirit that we can realize and be able to not be concerned about what the world has to say. But understand what God has to say. And God asked us to come as we are. 
Because he is the one who sent Jesus to die on the cross that we might be saved. That the blood that was shed on that old rugged cross is able to wash away all of our sins, all of our past sinful behaviors and usher us into a place of forgiveness. But not only forgiveness, but a journey like none other. There may be those of you today who may be struggling whether or not you are good enough. Whether you have what it takes to be a part of this group. A few good men for the Lord. And I would say, if you are a person of love and peace and joy and gentleness and kindness and willing to even endure some long suffering knowing that you are not alone, you have what it takes. If you know that within you, your soul is aching to be able to help others, you've got what it takes. If you're willing to open the doors of your home and allow someone that's in who doesn't have the shelter, who doesn't necessarily have the support system that they need, you have what it takes. My question to you, friend, is are you willing to be one of the few good men for the Lord? Amen and amen. Please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, God, that you do not view us as the world does, but that you look at our hearts, that you let us know that the journey that we're being called to is not one we will journey alone and not based on whether we were good today, but because of our hearts because of our willingness to follow you, to do as your son Jesus demonstrated for us here on earth, that yes, we can be a part of those few good men. So Lord, we thank you for the example of your son Jesus, as well as the words that he left us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. God bless you, church, and happy Father's Day.